It's time to talk about okra. I just want to give you a quick overview of what we're going to be covering today. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, how to plant okra, some of the different varieties. We'll show you exactly how we plant it and why we do it that way. And it's all going to be done using organic methods. Good morning, everybody. So, look so at our potato. I know they have gone a little bit crazy, which is nice. Um, I do have a little bit of bug eating, but I think that most of it is coming from roly polies. I have treated with Sluggo Plus, which is organic, and it takes care of it. Um, if you look down in here, you can see they've gotten very substantial. I can't wait until they it's time to harvest just to see what I've got in here. So this is my Kenan, was it Kenanbeck? This is a red Lasota and a Kenanbeck. Yeah, right? this is Kenanbeck and this is my red Lasota. My red Lasota didn't do as well. But if you look in here, I've got a couple of squash that have decided that they're going to grow in my pot for some strange reason. Here's a second one. <laughs> I don't know exactly how the seed got in there, but it got in there. If you look in my raised bed, you can also see that I've got some volunteer squash in here. I've got really cute little baby basils. Um, last year we had a huge basil on this end, and so I'm actually getting volunteer with that. I think this one is actually a cucumber, maybe. I'm not for sure. Um, you can see my pretty little ladybugs. They're doing their job at keeping the little critters under control. Can you There's see it? One. There you go. So my, my ecosystem seems to be doing okay. Um, I do have a pretty bad fire ant population in this bed um, oh goodness in this bed I have drenched it and then I put come and get it in I oh was just poking around and I didn't see any come out I think the come and get it has actually worked um, I'm hoping that it has because I really hate putting my hands in the soil when they have lots and little ants. Um, as you look at our yellow onions there, they have decided that they're done. And so we're going to harvest those today. We'll just take and pull them out and lay them out in the shady area so that they can dry. Um, we did not get them as deep as they should have been. So you can see that the tops have already started drying out. It has not hurt the flavor. I have pulled a, a couple of them and, and tried them. They're very good. But um, most of them have started laying down and that's happened over the last uh, probably two or three days. Um, the purple don't, doesn't seem like it is ready for me to pull yet. Um, so I'm going to wait until I actually see some of the stalks laying before I do any pulling. Oh look, here's another basil. I'm so excited about my little basils. <laughs> oh, and I uh, pulled out the Chinese cabbage because yes. it had bolted. Yes. And it was uh, covered in aphids. Oh. But there were there were ladybugs on there eating the aphids. But there yeah, were more now you took the aphids. now you took the ladybug uh, ladybugs dinner. And we um, talk about the Brussels sprouts. Oh yes, our Brussels sprout is doing really well. He's now put they know it's a he's put on his little sprouts up and down the shoot. Uh, each time that we take off a row of large leaves it encourages him to put on more babies. So this is a first time for me. I've never grown Brussels sprouts before. Didn't even know it was a Brussels sprout, but we'll see what happens. 
If you come through, our tomatoes are doing very, very well. They have really started growing. Um, they are just now starting to flower. We were a little worried about them, but they've, they've started putting on some flowers. This one's not flowering as heavy, but you can see here, there's all kinds of new that are just starting to do their thing. Excuse my dirty hands. Um, I've been playing. So we also have something eating on our basil. I'm thinking that it was the roly-polies because my bed had all kinds of roly-polies in it. And um, I'm thinking that it was the roly-poly snacking. I'm not for sure. We have not treated it with any kind of insect control other than the Sluggo Plus. Um, we just keep picking off the damaged leaves. As you can see, our lettuce is still growing. Um, we're harvesting a little bit each time. I think maybe we should have started the lettuce a little bit earlier. And our carrots. <laughs> I don't know if I like carrots or not. <laughs> they don't seem to be doing great, but they are there. I gave them a shot of seaweed to see if it would help with the bottom growth. Um, that is our smallest tomato plant and it's the Cherokee purple. It is blooming. It does have blooms on it and so I'm hoping that it will start setting some kind of fruit here pretty soon. Um, this one has gone crazy. This is my Sweet 100. Um, I'm having to make sure that I keep poking it up into the cage because it can get away from you really, really quickly. It also has started just now setting on uh, flowers. So, oh, and there's lots of them. Um, so we should start getting fruit here pretty soon. Yep, it seems like almost every big stem has flowers on it, or has the beginnings of flowers. But they seem nice and happy. I did put in our squash and cucumber, watermelon and um, cantaloupe in our pots. I took out my sweet peas because they did because of the fungus in the soil. I treated the buckets and then I added more uh, drainage holes at, around the sides of the buckets trying to keep it from holding too much water. So we have squash, we have cucumbers. Yeah, it's got lots and lots of buds on it. Um, as the squash starts to grow, we'll show you how to take out um, little sucker leaves making sure that the sun's getting in like right here we have it's very very thick and we'll want to make sure that we pinch out some of these leaves so that the sun can get into the fruit all right that's our that's our tour um, today we're going to talk about okra and planting okra one of the things that we need to know is that they need to be, they need to have a lot of air space. So we're gonna plant them at about a foot, foot and a half apart. If you're planting rows, make sure each row is at least three feet apart. So, so we, okra here is a very easy crop to do. We are, we are uh, nice and warm now's about the time that you need to get it put in if you decide that you're going to start it by seed what you can um, do it this weekend to get them in and, and going from the time of planting sowing your seed until you first get your first blooms and that is going to be about 60 days which will put us into first of august and so you'll start getting getting fruit about then. 
Um, I'm starting with starts that are already here. Um, I'm going to do a combination of emerald, burgundy, and Clemson spineless. And I'm just going to alternate those in my bed. Uh, your bed wants to, your bed, they like being, they don't like being dry, but they can go through dry periods. Um, but they never want to keep their feet wet. They're really prone to fungus. So you want to make sure that they have good airflow and that they don't stay too wet. Um, they are very easy, um, forgiving of soil types. You don't have to, if you've got a area in your garden that you can't get anything else to grow because it either dries out or the soil's not as rich or some reason, your okra should thrive in it because they don't mind. I mean, they'll even grow in our clay just as long as you make sure that you're, um, you're not letting its feet stay too wet. Other than that, okra, because it does produce so much fruit on it, you want to make sure that you're fertilizing and you want, with raised beds and containers, you need to be fertilizing about every 30 days. They like nitrogen, but they need an overall fertilization. So um, if you're using a granule fertilizer, uh, like your garden tone or, cit or tomato tone, every 30 days, if you're gonna do a liquid fertilization, I would say do it about every two, maybe three weeks um, to, keep, to keep it good and, and fed. Uh, most everything likes more feed than um, we remember to give it when we're in pots and raised beds. You know, they don't have to be fed as often if they're in the ground. In the ground, I would say every 45 days or so to feed. Um, For your funguses, you can use either the 70% neem, the 100% neem. This guy you would use as a drench. You wouldn't use as a foliar feed. The 70% neem you can do as a foliar feed, but you need to do it early in the morning or late in the evening to where the sun is not hitting the leaves when they're still wet with the oil because it can fry them. You can use uh, oh, this, organicide, which I really like the organicide because it's bee safe. It's not going to kill your little bees. It's not going to kill your ladybugs, but it will take care of insects, mites, and funguses. Fun fungicide. It's called Be Safe 3-in-1. Um, sometimes it's easier having a 3-in-1 because you don't have to worry about having this container, that container, another container. It's just, it's going to work on all three. And it's very successful at working at all three. I've been very uh, pleased with this particular product. If you've got worms, any kind of caterpillars, that kind of thing, eating your tomatoes, eating your other guys, use the BT, is that it? Yeah, your caterpillar spray. Um, just make sure that you're not spraying the flower itself. Uh, spray, sorry, I forget about y'all. Um, <laughs> make sure that you're spraying just the leaves, don't spray the flowers because you don't want to harm our bees and all of those little guys but this works very well for any kind of worm caterpillar um, for other insects aphids spider mite those kind of things that can attack you can use spinosad uh, captain jacks is a really good one. Oh, i sorry captain jacks is a really good one this is a powder. The pow what's really cool about the powder is it's a colored powder. So you can powder it on your plant. You can see exactly where it's going. And um, then when the powder's gone, you know it's time to repowder. They've also got it in a spray, so you can just spray the... You need to be over here. <laughs> so you can uh, just do a, a liquid spray with it. But this is going to take care of all kinds of insects and work really well. 
Uh, I like it for spider mite and I like it for aphids because it seems to do a really good job on both of those. Uh, it's, if I get spider mite in the, in the greenhouse, that's what I use because I can, because it's organic. Well, I talked about using Sluggo on our garden because the Sluggo, uh, our garden has a big roly-poly issue and the Sluggo Plus actually takes care of roly-polies. It's not just a slug. It takes care of earwigs. It, it takes care of a lot more things than just slugs. Um, but slugs, are, slugs, snails, and roly-polies are really bad in the garden. They like to be into any kind of leaf litter, um, that kind of thing they get in and they start munching down and they can do a lot of destruction and you don't really even notice it until after the destruction has happened. So this stuff, it is organic. You can put it in your garden without having to worry about it. The other day when we did our squash, planting of the squash, talking about squash, we were talking about having uh, squash vine borers. We have got our traps in and that's one of the things that I'll do. I'm gonna wait until the wind dies down today it's supposed to go away this evening but um, I'll put out the squash squash vine traps and this has an allure in it and you just put it in the middle of it and then the the little bug comes in and gets caught it works really well all it is is the hormone that they secrete and so it causes them to go in there instead of going into your squash. I think it says 15 feet. So one trap, if I put one trap in the middle of, of my teepee, it should take care of the whole 15 feet there. Just one trap. I'm going to put one in my teepee and then one against the fence because it also works um, to keep, because squash vine borers will get into your cucumbers and it'll get into your melons and that. And since I'm gonna have it on the fence line, I want to protect my fence line too. This is for white fly, aphids, that kind of thing. So you can put these traps out and it will, it, it's a sticky trap. So any insect that is attracted to it, it's gonna stick to it and keep it off of your vegetables and it says that it works white fly aphids uh, fruit nut flies thrips stink bugs ooh wasp uh, it's got a whole a whole list of things that it takes care of that will be attracted to it it's yellow like all of the yellow blooms so yeah everything that blooms yellow it seems like the insects, the, especially the squash borers, um, seem to be more attracted to than, say, our okra that's going to bloom white. So, uh, one of the things with okra, I said I was planting the burgundy. Um, I am planting the burgundy just because I think it's kind of a cool color. But once you, once you grow it, you cut it, you cook it, it is no longer burgundy. It turns green and the taste is the same. So, it's just fun looking at a different color. I like anything that has different colors. That's why I tried the purple beans that somebody ate every single leaf off of and I had to start over. Yes, ma'am. Starting over from seed, I've always heard that you should uh, put them in uh, buttermilk overnight and then plant them. Um, she's asking about starting seeds and putting them in buttermilk overnight. I haven't really heard about the buttermilk. I think really what it is is just soaking your seeds overnight so you get a better germination. Um, if you want to soak them in buttermilk, fine. Um, it's it. Oh, and then make biscuits. Ah, I was watching a video on okra and they were telling me that back when there was a coffee shortage and people did not have coffee beans, they would grow okra and then roast the okra seeds and they would brew their coffee out of okra seeds and they still do it um, no caffeine 
so you're drinking okra brew and once you once you roast those seeds and and that it's not a slimy coffee <laughs> it makes a really good coffee they were also saying that if you will harvest your your okra at about thumb's length that it doesn't have that slimy that people don't like because it hadn't developed it yet but that slimy stuff that some people don't like is actually good for your uh, gut health it it feeds your good stuff yes they were saying that you can take away the sliminess by either soaking it for an hour in uh, apple cider vinegar or you know cooking with a little bit like if you're gonna boil it or something like that um, to take away that sliminess but if you take away the sliminess if you're not getting the health benefit You'll, you'll grow to like that slimy taste. <laughs> We're going to plant these guys real quick. I do want to say that next week's class will be on herbs. And we have Marilyn coming to do the herb class for us. Um, Marilyn has been in the herb business for quite a few years. I'm not going to say how long because I might mess it up. I'm going this way. All this is, is um, seaweed. It's liquid seaweed and it works as, are you coming? It works as a root stimulator. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna take and dig my little hole. Why are you taking my, I don't see where you're digging look what you did. You stooshed my volunteer whatever it is. We don't know what it is, uh, but we were watching it. Ooh, this is real. I'm going to dunk him into it. He'll get watered in afterwards. Sit him in. Make sure he's good and tight. You don't want any air pockets in there. And then we'll water him in. That's it. I always try to make sure that I put my tag back in so I'll know which one is which. Okay, I'll do one more. This is, this is my burgundy. Burgundy gets about five foot tall. Is that a, is that a foot? Yeah. That's about a foot, right? Yeah, it's about 16 inches. Yeah. Ooh, nice and soaked. Put him in here. I really like our blend that we've done for the raised bed. It's really easy to work with. Um, seems to drain really well. So I don't have to worry about wet feet. Uh, we're gonna pull our onions. That dill is humongous. We've already taken some of it out. But, um, so all we're gonna do to harvest these guys is just pull them, shake off as much soil, but they really, they're kinda clean. Some soils, you're not supposed to rub them. What's really neat is if you see the size of this guy how much smaller he is because he's been shaded by the deal this whole time and if when i get over there we'll show you the full sun you want me to pull this one? yes ma'am he's got a good root structure so this one that's been in the full sun this whole time as you can see got to a really really nice size so sun does really help with the growth next year I will not put my uh, look at that one that one didn't get to grow I might have to replant it um, I won't be putting my dill in the in the actual raised bed he'll have to go in a pot 
And as you can see, most of my onions are up really tall. It's because my little guy that did my planting for me didn't get them quite deep enough. So we'll have to uh, make sure that our next growing, oh, we could do, uh, no, we can't. Next year when we get them, we'll um, make sure that we get them deep enough. It's really funny, he planted these on one day and the red ones on another day. The red ones got planted deep enough, but these didn't. Anyway, so these guys I'm going to let set out. You don't let them set out in the sun. You, let, you make sure that they're in a shaded area. Let them dry. Once they're dry, you can knock any of the soil that's left on them off and then you can store them in a dry, dark place. And they'll hold up for six months, I think. I would let them dry for about 48 hours. Then you can go ahead and do what you're gonna do with them. Some people braid them and hang them, you know, kind of like garlic, but they'll braid and hang their, their onions. Uh, some people just take them and cut the tops off of them and leave them in say boxes but you got to make sure that they're not stacked on top of each other because the weight can cause them to bruise and cause them to start rotting so next week is herbs the 22nd will be sweet potato slips and i think probably <clears throat> by then our potatoes should be close to harvest time we might be able to harvest and show you what we got in our potatoes. Um, each bucket is only one potato. So we'll see how much we actually got out of it. Um, I think that the Kennenbeck is going to be a bigger crop than what my uh, red Lesotas are. Red Lesotas, they didn't all decide to come up at the exact same time. And a couple of them were really tall and it needed to be healed and I healed it and I think I stunted the other two that were really short. It's all a experiment. Thank you. I appreciate y'all joining us. Come back and see us.